Hi, um, my name is Dave Ferguson. I have the privilege of working with the whole Exponential team. Todd is the genius behind. The, he's kind of the mad scientist that makes it all work, and he allows me to be the upfront guy and serve as the president. So it's, it's a treat to be here. I want to say a special thanks right off the bat, though, to uh, Leadership Network and also the Vanderbloom and Search Group and also Generis, uh, three organizations that we love and do a great job serving leaders and are providing your dinner. So let's give them some love. <laughs> Um, I'm only gonna. I'll just. I'm just gonna spend a few minutes, maybe 15 minutes, something like that. Um, I want to introduce you, just kind of give you a little heads up to the kind of the 2016 exponential theme, and then we'll have a chance to uh, to eat and just kind of hang out and have a good time. Um, as we looked at the 2015, and it's for those of you who weren't didn't get a chance to be in Orlando, what's currently unfolding. This year's theme is, I mean, spark igniting a culture of multiplication. One of the things we consistently found is begin to look at movie making churches is that at the core of what's going on, there's a culture of multiplication. And the model that you're seeing unfold, and we kind of introduced today, is this, this model where at the very center is, are the values of multiplication. You're passionate about it in your heart. I mean, something you feel deeply about, but it's also something, there's a conviction of the mind about it, and those make up the values. But then there's the narrative that wraps around that, the stories and the language that we tell, uh, that we use, that, that, that reinforce those values. But then the last part, and we'll hit that at the very end, is about the behaviors. And what happens is the reason that a lot of churches don't have a strong culture of multiplication is because they don't necessarily, the behaviors don't match up with the stories they tell or the language they use or the values that you know, they put on the wall, so this is what we hold. And we're saying when those things all line up, then you create this culture of multiplication that can create a movement-making church. And movement is, is always, always important because movement is how we accomplish the mission of Jesus. All right? We're not just infatuated movement for movement's sake, but movement is how you accomplish the mission of Jesus. So that, that's this year. Now, as we kind of looked in 2016, uh, we wanted to build on that theme. And, and part of what we feel like our role at Exponential is to kind of lead the conversation or certainly contribute to the conversation um, in North America and sometimes even beyond that as far as church planning is concerned. If you want to grab one of the books at the center of your table, you can go ahead and grab a hold of those. It's... it's uh, Something that Todd and I put together. I would call it a, a, probably a field guide, more than I would a book, actually. Um, I think there is probably two or three books, actually, in there. But the, I think it's more of a field guide that kind of gives you the, some, of the, some of the real bare-bones thoughts behind um, what we're talking about in 2016, which is the idea of becoming a level five multiplying church. Part of, um, part of what's behind this idea of, of a level five church, and I, I talked about it just a little bit, if you happen to be... In the, in the first session is what, thanks to LifeWay and Ed Stetzer, what we have is you can kind of basically put churches into, into five different categories. And you have, what you have is you have ones, which are those churches that are in decline. Then you have twos, which are those churches that are what we would call just plateaued. Um, if we have 350,000 churches in North America, in, in the United States, so the 350,000 churches in the United States, what you have is you have really about 80% of those churches that are probably what we call ones or twos. And we're intentionally starting to use this language because, again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create this culture of multiplication. We already, as a group here, as leaders, we already hold it as a value, correct? One of the things we need to do a better job, though, is creating language, okay, part of the narrative that's going to shape the culture of the church and become a church of multiplication. So that's what we're really doing here. We're creating some language around it. So ones are churches in decline, twos are those that are plateaued, about 80% of the 350,000 churches in, North, in the United States. Three would be those churches that are growing by addition. Of the 350,000 churches in the United States, probably about somewhere there, about 16% of those are actually growing by addition. Well, that leaves the fours and the fives. What we have in the fours are those churches that we would actually call reproducing churches. There are about 4% of all churches uh, reproduce in any way. Plant a church or start a second site. If we dig a little deeper into that, what we also find is that about half of those, okay, do it on purpose. Um, what that means is of those, that 4%, actually what we find is that 2% of them are really a result of church splits. And as we begin to do some, some of the homework and actually do some research on this, on what five would be, which would be multiplying or movement making churches. Currently in the United States, we, would, we, we were hard pressed to find any. We couldn't find any. And again, 
part of what we're part of what we're talking about here is if movement is how we accomplish the mission. What we need to see is we need to see more fours and fives. And again, we're introducing this language to you. We hope you'll adopt this language. We certainly want to introduce it next year. Ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives. And what does it take for us to begin to think about and move our churches towards churches that are level four and level five kind of churches? Now, with some intention, you'll notice that even, even this year at Exponential, because um, we already are starting to think this way, uh, not having very many fours or fives in the United States, uh, JD is here with us. I, I would consider Summit Church a rare exception to that, is doing a, a great job to what they're doing here. If you can thank them. <laughs> uh, and I, I think probably JD would admit, no, he's not yet at this place where he would say, I've started a movement, but it clearly is a, a level four as a, as a reproducing church. So we had to go outside the United States to begin to invite people who really are these kind of level five churches. That's why you have something like Mario Vega. Mario is here with us. Good to have you here, Mario. <laughs> Last I checked, and these stats are from April, had a, this church was about 73,000 people, and they're planting churches globally. It's probably much larger than that by now, but it's good to have him here. Um, that's why we have Pastor Oscar from Nairobi Chapel, who's, you know, literally trained somewhere in the neighborhood of five or 600 people for, uh, to, be, to plant churches. That's why Steve Morell, and if you got to hear from Steve, I mean, and you saw, I mean, you saw if you were in that session, that the, I mean, really an exponential J curve kind of growth. You know, close to 80,000 folks, 15 locations, planted hundreds of churches. You're going to hear, to hear from Ajay Law. Ajay Law is a guy who's from India who's planted 1,650 churches. You know, Ying Kai, um, who, what a brilliant, I mean, who makes it sound, who, well, it is. He makes it, it's very simple and reproducible. And you, you're 140,000 churches, and, you know, and over almost 2 million people that have been baptized under his leadership. We intentionally brought those people in because we looked at those people and said, okay, these are people who are fives, and we need to hear from those folks. What you're going to find in the book in, is that we, what we're discovering there's almost like, there's like this magnetic pull. If you're a three, there's like, there's like a magnetic pull really from kind of two to three. There's also a magnetic pull kind of from four back to three. And so like everything kind of pulls you this direction. So it's not surprising that the churches that end up on the largest church list, the churches that end up on the fastest growing list, many of them would probably be just level three churches. And they wouldn't be level four churches, or certainly level five churches. And while we celebrate addition, if we're serious about trying to get the mission accomplished, we know that's gonna take level four and level five. It's just gonna take level four and level five. And there are a number of tools that we're putting, in, putting into place um, we're, we've actually put some things together. Some of the resources are kind of patterned after a Myers-Briggs, so you can actually identify your pattern in your church, uh, which one it is, what kind of things, an assessment tool, uh, so how you can kind of move things forward. Uh, a number of different things we're doing that. But to skip kind of to more of the bottom line, I think the two challenges that put before us are this. One is, if we're going to be successful again at the mission of Jesus, we have to, and it probably starts in this room more than anywhere else, we have to continue to champion this cause but we've got to have fours and fives. We've got to have fours and fives. And one of the things, um, as Todd and I talked about this, has been a conviction of ours over the last year or so, and this has become a prayer of mine, and you can look at my journal. It's in my journal probably every day for the last three years. If the current state is that we have 4% of the churches in the United States that are reproducing, how do we get that to 10%? If we get that to 6% for Pete's sake, that's a game changer in the United States. That's a game changer. And we began to kind of look at the Exponential Conference, and in some ways, I, and Todd and I had a hard heart, we go like, you know, the same critique that we have of big churches can be made of Exponential. Because what do we say about big churches? Oh, well, all they're concerned about is more butts in the seats and more bucks in the offering, right? Butts and bucks. Well, it turns out now we got a big conference that's actually breaking even. <laughs> and so what are, what's our metric here at Exponential? Are we content with just having bigger and bigger registrations and making sure we kind of break even every year? Is that? And we said, no, well, what we want to do is we would like to provide, at least the, with the hat of Exponential on, provide the thought leadership and the encouragement to say, okay, what is it going to take for us to move from four to five to six, even think in terms of 10% of the churches reproducing? Does that make sense? And so we're going to hone in and do everything we possibly can to try to make that happen. And there's going to be some stuff, I think, in the future we start talking about that we're not going to do anymore so we can make that happen. 
Because if we make that happen, that's the most important. We feel like that's the most important metric. That's the hill we want to die on. Are you with me on that? Yeah. All right. So I think we think that's really important. So those are kind of the two challenges that we came came away with. Um, it brought to mind for me Malcolm Gladwell in his book The Tipping Point. He, he said something very interesting. He said this: the paradox of the epidemic is that in order to create one contagious movement, you often have to create many small movements first. In order to create one contagious movement, you often have to create many small movements first. And I think what we're going to find is that for us to move churches from threes to fours, threes to fours to five, there's, there's a handful of tensions that you're going to have to be in. And Andy Stanley talks about this in a different context. But he talks about some things aren't problems to be solved, but tensions to be managed. And there's going to be some tensions that we're going to have to say, no, 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 no. If we're serious about getting people here, getting church in, these are tensions to be managed. Let me just hit a, hit a couple of them, then I'll let you guys eat dinner. <laughs> One of the tensions, I think, is this. The tension between, uh, you could almost call it the tension of proximity. The tension between focusing here or there. Focusing on here versus going there. Uh, one of the things, uh, my brother John and I, occasionally we'll get, we get invited to different places across the country. We'll do an exponential practicum. And it's, based on the book that we wrote, one of the things that we'll do is we'll pass out napkins to everybody, and we'll ask them on the back of the napkin to kind of write out their dream for their church. Write out their dream for the church on the back of the napkin. And um, you can almost always tell at a glimpse at their napkin, especially if it's a church planner, if their church in the future is going to be a three or has a chance of being a four or five. I mean, if there is, you know, if there's kind of like one circle... Um, you're going like, and, there, and there's one church in, in one location, you're going, okay, this, this, is, this is going to be a three. If you look a little closer, and it's got a little bit of kind of a circle, hub and spoke, well, maybe it's going to be, maybe it has a chance of being a four. But occasionally you run across the church planner, and they draw their neat dream napkin, and, and instead it looks like this kind of uh, atomic formula, and you're going, okay, this is a guy, this is a gal who's thinking about fours or fives. Um, there's going to be a tension that's always going to exist for leaders between here versus there. Right here versus the next new church. And the things that are going to always, the tension that's always going to pull us back is going to be things like pastoral care, um, budget constraints, uh, leadership challenges, uh, your own schedule, those kinds of things. Uh, and, and that's just going to be a tension that's going to have to be managed by all of us. We have to be saying, we have to over and over again say, we can't be just content with right here. We have to also think about there, 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 and there. And that's going to be a tension we're going to have to have to, have to manage. So one of the questions we'd like to ask is this. Um, ask yourself, do you have as many going there strategies as you do growth right here strategies? One of the things that we do at, at New Thing, because we want people to start thinking about this, is we actually have every one of our church planners fill out what we call an MRP, a My Reproducing Plan. And if they don't want to fill out a My Reproducing Plan, then they can't be a new thing. And that's not being mean-spirited. It's just because, no, we're committed to, we're gonna, we want to we wanna be fours and fives, and you ought to be a part of something else. And it's, it's basically an intention saying, no, here's my intention. I'm not just content with here, but I'm also wanting to go there, there, and there. Um, another tension I think all of us are going to have to manage is what I call the tension of priority. The first one is the tension of proximity about here versus there, which I think can be resolved pretty clear, clearly early on when you determine your mission and your vision. The second tension I think you have to manage is the tension of priority, which is the tension of, of growing versus sending. And this is where I think J.D., if you haven't picked up his book, you need to pick up J.D.'s book because he does a great job addressing this, okay, where he realizes it's not just a, a, a problem to be solved, but it's actually a tension to be managed. And you have to answer the question, will you only be about growing or will you also be about sending? And this is where I, mean, I think it gets very practical. I remember, um, this goes back some years now, where I was asked by a very large church uh, to come in and do kind of a consultation because they were thinking for the first time about going to multiple locations. And this is a very large church. It's a beautiful model for exactly how to do things right. Um, excellence. And, um, and they wanted to kind of, they're starting to talk about reproducing. And so basically, John was a part of this, and we, we went in and we kind of gave him oh, an hour, hour and a half pitch, kind of did our exponential book in about, you know, 90 minutes. And at the end of it, um, I remember one of the senior level staff people made this comment, and the comment was this, 
But Dave, one of our core values is excellence. How can we focus on what you're saying when we haven't got this one right? Is that, you hear me on this? And I think what was happening for the very first time, they were feeling the tension between both growing and sending. And that's the tension we have to live in, we want to live in. Um, I love Pastor Oscar from, from Nairobi Chapel. Um, he did a, a new thing online recently. And they currently have 80 leadership presence, and they have this three-track deal where they're getting ready to send all kinds of people. You ought to really check it, check it out. But one of the things he said, he says, my ministry is focused on Psalm 17, 18, which says, even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. And then he said this, he said, I'm going to invest myself making sure I'm surrounded constantly by young people in their 20s and then sending them. Okay, and this is a guy who started a church that probably has 14 to 15,000 people. Yeah, he is committed to growing something, but he's living that tension. I'm going to grow and I'm going to send. I'm going to send, I'm going to send, I'm going to send. I, I mean, if you got to be in the last session, you guys get to be in the last session where, where Joby and Jerry were there speaking. What a, what a beautiful example of that. A beautiful example of that. So we have to ask ourselves these questions. Like, are we hanging on to our best staff members or are we ready to send them out as church planners? Are we developing our best leaders to run our programs with my staff, or are we intentionally growing leaders that we're going to send out? Do we have, when it comes to excellence, excellent leadership residency programs? Have we emphasized excellence in our, our leadership development and sending structures as much as our programming and creative arts kind of programs? And if we're going to, have, we're going to, if we're going to see fours and fives, we've got to get this figured out and live in this tension of, yeah, we're going to grow, but we're also, all of us, it's just a value and as a part of the story and a part of our behavior, we're going to send, send, send. Let me give you one more tension I think you're going to have to live into if we're going to move people from threes, fours, to fives. And I think the, the last tension is it's kind of this tension, and this is probably for those of us in this room who are in our 40s, 50s, and 60s. And I think you need to ask yourself, am I building systems right now that are going to allow me to coast or relax or am I still engaged in taking risks? And you could call this this kind of this last tension of kind of relaxing or, or risk taking. And I think I think for, for this requires a lot of honesty. And I think it's very easy for some of us to say, "Oh, I have a multi-site church and think I get it," but well, maybe you still don't get it. And I think it's also easy for some of us to say, "Oh, I planted churches and say, oh, I get it." No, and you still don't get it because here's what happens. I think for maybe a lot of us even in this room, or maybe I'm just talking to myself here. <laughs> You're now at a season in your ministry where you have unprecedented ministry opportunities. Um, there's resources you have access to that you didn't have access to in your, your 20s and 30s. There are relationships, networked relationships that you can leverage that you couldn't leverage when you were newer into ministry. That there's credibility that you have um, because of long-term relationships. And I think for a lot of us, again, 40s, 50s, and 60s, I have to ask the question, is this the time to relax or is this a time to leverage all our leadership for reasonable risk taking? And um, one, of my, one of my favorite people is Dan Sutherland in Kansas City. Dan's a guy who's in his uh, 60s, early 60s, and uh, leading Westside family there. But in partnership with Troy McMahon, I mean, they now have a plan for planting 100 churches in the Kansas City area. And he is doing anything but coasting. Uh, I would love for my dad to be here. My dad's one of our campus pastors. He started a brand new campus in a senior getting golf community when he was, well, he came and took that over when he was like about 65. And he's now 75. We just had this, we had a leadership residency meeting for potential leadership residents. He brought in four folks that are all between, probably what do you think, John, 60 and 75? Who want to start brand new sites in senior gated golf communities. That's the kind of mindset that we need. And um, as we introduce this theme, here's our, part of our hope. We want to introduce uh, this language. We're going to do some tools. But uh, our hope, our hope is that we can begin to move this forward and go like, okay, how do all of us move everything from, instead of threes being the ideal, that's what success looks like. What, what does success mean to look like? No, fours and fives. Because if it's fours and fives, then you've got movement, and movement's how you accomplish the mission. All right? So that's where we're headed next year. We are um, extraordinarily grateful for, for you people, uh, for the work that you do, uh, the way you continue to rally people around Exponential and um, 
and the platform that it gives all of us. So I just want to say thank you very, very much for that.